Hello, time to understand array of pointers. Now, in this example, we have declared one dimensional array P with three elements, but please notice that the type for the array is int star. Now, each element of array P is actually integer pointer. That is, each element of array P can hold the address of one integer variable. P is called array of pointers. So if I just declare in this way, four star K and 10, then k is actually array of floating point pointers. That means each element of array k is a float pointer, can hold the address of one float variable. So this is actually the array of character pointers where each element of str can hold the address of a character. In order to understand array of pointers in a better way, let me just draw a block diagram here. Here we go. Let this is the array P and the array starts from 5000th byte of the memory. Then the second element starts from 5008. Don't forget that each element is a pointer. So here each element of the array is a pointer. So the size of each element should be according to the addressing scheme of the operating system. So if I am using 64 bit operating system, then size of each element is going to be eight bytes. So the starting address of the third element is 5016. The base address of any array is implicitly kept in the name of, for the array. So here P is the name of the array. So P contains 5000. Now the nature of the address of each element is actually pointer to pointer here each element is pointer so this 5000 is address of a pointer so it's going to be pointer to pointer so the name for one dimensional array of pointer is always pointer to pointer so p is actually pointer to pointer here now if we need to assign p to some variable that has to be declared as pointer to pointer say I need to assign the content of P so I need to declare a pointer to pointer K so now K is capable of holding the content of P K is now pointing to the 5000th location and K is pointer to pointer so it's pointing to the same location where the P is pointing now in order to understand the usage of array of pointers let us take this example say we have three arrays declared and they are initialized in this way Okay, now what I'm doing, I'm assigning the base address of each array to the corresponding elements of the array of pointers. So the first element of the array of pointer is assigned with X. X is the base address to the first array. So P0, the first element of the array of pointer right now holding the address, base address of the array X. So it is pointing to the first element of array X. And so we assign the Y to P1. So P1 is right now pointing to 10. That is the first element of array Y. And then P2 is equals to Z. So the third element of the array of pointer is right now pointing to the array Z. So let me just draw the block diagram so that the picture is much more clear and we can explain the things in much comprehensive way. And then we will understand how the two dimensional array could be modeled using array of pointers. Okay, here we go. So here is the block diagram of the situation that we have here with our with our program. We have assigned the base address of each array to the each element of array of pointers. So P0 is actually pointing to the first element of the array X and P1 is pointing to the first element of the array Y and P2 is pointing to the first element of the array Z. We have assumed the address just blindly it could be anything. So X array is starting from 7000 and Y is starting from 7012 and Z is starting from 7024. And each of these base addresses are assigned here. You can see that in P0, P1 and P2. So now let me just write this. If I just go on and write a printf statement printing star star pre something like this in my program, then what's going to be the output? Now it's simple. P means it's 5000. So star P means it's the content of 5000. That's 7000. Now again, we are dereferencing. It's star of 7000. Now this 7000 is integer pointer. So star of 7000 means four bytes starting from 7000 and that's one. Star star P is going to print one. Let us check this with our program, writing that printf statement and 
executing the program that should be one okay here we go you can see that it's indeed one now I'm just writing this here say I have written this expression p plus one and it's going to be actually 5008 because p is 5000 that's the pointer to pointer so p plus one is going to take us to the next address of the of the add element that's 5008 so start of 5008 is going to give us 7012 because the content of 5008 is 7012 here and then if I just go ahead and add 2 now 7012 is integer pointer so plus 1 is actually 7016 because each integer takes 4 bytes so plus 2 is going to be 7020 so this is actually 7020 now if I go ahead and dereference once more then it's actually the content of 7020 and that's 30 so if I just go and print this expression it's going to be 30 according to our example so I'm just writing this so let me go ahead and run this program you can see that it's 30 here from this printf statement so we understood how the dereferencing takes place with the array of pointers now if we just can dig deeper we can see it's a model for two-dimensional array this total system with three integer arrays and one array of pointer is basically forming a two-dimensional array with three rows and three columns I'm just marking this so that you can understand clear you can see that this is the two-dimensional array with three rows where the first row is containing this one-dimensional array and the second row is this one and the third row is this one so this is actually row 0 and this is actually row 1 and this is actually row 2 and this is actually the column 0 and this is column 1 and this is column 2 so this is actually a model for two dimensional array with three rows and three columns and here with this expression what we get is the content for second row and third column this is two actually so the second row is this one and the third column is this one so this is actually 30 and we got 30 actually printed so if it was a traditional two-dimensional array and we would like to print the content for second row and third column we would have written this expression instead of writing this so now what happens these two are just equivalent now if we write this double subscription in order to access a sale of two-dimensional array ultimately this is going to be converted to this kind of pointer notation because that is equivalent now we can go ahead and find the equivalency in this way say we have this expression p plus one this is actually equivalent of writing p third bracket one we know that from the from our conception of one dimensional array and pointers now if we have this p plus one plus two star then we can rewrite this as p third bracket one then the expression becomes this so this is actually equivalent of writing this both are equivalent now if I write this expression instead of this expression we are going to still going to get 30 so this is also a valid expression now I'm assuming that this p third bracket 1 is m for shake of simplicity and I am replacing p third bracket 1 with m here now this m plus 2 star is actually m third bracket 2 according to our understanding of relationship between one dimensional pointer and array now I'm substituting the value for m and that is p, p third bracket 1 so if I again go ahead and substitute m then what we get is this and we came from this expression so these two expressions are equivalent this and this pointer notation this and this pointer notation are just equivalent so in general if I go ahead and write p plus i star plus j this is actually equivalent of writing p third bracket i third bracket j 
and that's how we access the cell access a particular cell of two-dimensional array so when we are actually considering a two-dimensional array this is the equivalent expression point and notation for accessing a particular cell of two-dimensional array so going ahead with the next tutorial i will be developing a dynamic two-dimensional array using one-dimensional array of pointer and uh, dynamic allocation techniques such as malloc or calloc so that's all for now thank you